Okay, here we go with part two. So uh, I went ahead and made a choice. Uh, the shaker is going to come in at verse one and then maybe the tambourine at verse two. Uh, and I realized that I didn't add any reverb, but definitely want that to exist somewhere in space. So I'm going to do that right now. Reverb. Let's use the ballad reverb because I like that one. Uh, it's just on the percussion track. Okay. Okay, it's also stupid loud, so... Okay, and then I'm gonna use that saturator again because And I'm going to compress this, but actually I think the compression will be a little bit different for each uh, shaker and tambourine. So because this is so stereo, I don't need this to do anything else really. So that'll be nice. Hello. Also hitting way too often, so I'm gonna change to that loop to be one, two. Okay. Just once on the two. Not what I wanted. You know what your shortcuts are. There we go. Great, so now I can save this one for some other time, which actually, I don't think I can put that somewhere that will make sense. So I'm just gonna set you there. It's not a loop, it's not loop. Okay, so uh, the piano part is really busy. Um, and uh, we had talked about keeping things quiet or uh, stripped down. So I am not sure what I want to do quite yet. The problem is I can't. I want to augment that sound. Um, is that movement done? And my first thought would be strings, but then you know, then we're getting strings involved. So maybe let's not do that. Uh, it could just be a matter of you know a different piano patch. Um, but since this is an audio file, we don't have the pleasure of changing patches. Uh, so yeah, okay. So let's do this and let's just see right now where the vocals sit um, in this mix. Wait, sorry, that was such a tease. Wow. Uh, I realized, okay, so a couple of things. One, because these are uh, mixed downs, um, I got them in stereo, but I don't want them in stereo. So I just use this utility to set them to mono or at least i should have get out of here waves mono mono my track is already in mono okay so now uh i'm gonna do what i normally do for vocals which is compress them and eq them so there's my compressor and then here's my eq I'm, i don't think i need a gate and normally i would just use the sibilance plugin but uh actually for the purposes of this i will go ahead and use Ableton's thing, just so I can talk through what DSing actually is. DSing is a sidechain compression of a specific frequency, so I think it's actually really cool. Um, okay, so basic settings for the compressor are, you know, I really go back and forth on the actual timing, but I generally compressed around 4 dB, uh, sorry, a ratio of 4 to 1, um, 
And then this has a makeup gate thing, which is nice because then I don't have to worry about it. But basically, I'm looking for some amount of gain reduction, which you'll see here. I heard the bells on Christmas Day. So that's maybe like at most 3 dB, right? And um, I think if we go on yet, yeah, Stephanie sings pretty consistently. My dB is kind of all over the place. So if you take a look at this for, here we go. Then ring the bells more loud and deep. Also, that's what the makeup gain does. Then ring the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor does he sleep. All right. So uh, just slowed down that release time to really emphasize that gain reduction. Uh, so basically what's happening is because this happens so fast, you lose some of those dynamics, which means that we'll need to go back and automate it uh, back in. But uh, it helps add some roundness to my voice, which is nice. Um, and then it helps reduce dynamics uh, just so it can be a little more even, especially, uh, I mean, that's a natural phrase, but like looking at the difference here. Peace on earth, goodwill to man. Them ringing, singing on it. So that's definitely the wrong note. Then ringing sing. And I. Oh gosh. Well, you know. Then ringing. It's just this little section here. Then ringing sing. So it didn't. It didn't hit the note strongly enough for it to register that it was its own note. So, doop. And then you can see I'm a little under, obviously. So, and yeah, make that more natural. Actually, wait. Make this like that. And let's listen. Then ringing, singing. Oh. Great. Okay. Now that that is fixed. Then ringing, singing on its way. So compression here. The world revolve from night to day. So yeah, it just kind of helps even those things out. Uh, you know, if I was really adamant about compression because it, you know, does a bunch of bad things, then I could go back and uh, automate all of those things with the volume control. But I am lazy, and this is good enough. So, yep. Uh so we've got compression, then we have EQ. For female vocals, I generally just go ahead and take start at a frequency range of 200, but because she's a lead vocal in this point, I'm gonna start at 130. I heard the bells on Christmas Day. All right, and because of what is around her, I'm actually gonna keep it pretty warm. So, let's look. I heard the bells. That's too much warmth. <laughs> I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Okay, so. I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Their old familiar carols play. And mild and sweet their songs repeat. Okay, so the nice thing about the compressor is all the things that I mentioned before. I heard the bells. Why is she so, well, I mean, I know why, but. I heard. Okay, let's drop that 6 dB. I heard the bells on Christmas. So you can see every S over there is up near 10K. And the compressor, because of it's just how the compressor works and how the human mouth works, those S's and SH sounds are gonna be really emphasized when you compress them. So what we actually do is we use a compressor to de-emphasize them. Hence the term de -er. uh, So what you do is you EQ it. And uh, let's see, her S's were up around here. So um, I'm going to use the headphone thing. So here's what we're listening to. Here's what the compressor is listening to. I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Okay, I'll just turn it down. I heard the bells on the bells on Christmas Okay, so let me drop that down, and then this is just a different way of looking at it. Okay, 
Bells on Christmas. Bells on Christmas. Okay. Bells on Christmas. Bells Bells on Christmas. Bells on Christmas. Great. So now if we turn the headphones off. Bells on Christmas. Also, I don't need that makeup. Bells on Christmas. Nice. Turn the ratio up. Attack and release. Bells on Christmas. Okay. So uh, that is DSing, is it literally is picking out some frequencies, which as we can see, we're up around eight to 10 K. This actually ended up being around six K. I heard the bells on Christmas day. As opposed to. I heard the bells on Christmas day. So those really pop out. So from here on out, I'm just gonna use the siblings plugin because that was a lot of work and the siblings plugin makes it faster. But that is what side, side sorry, uh, that's what uh, DSing is. It just literally is listening to a specific frequency of sounds and DSing, uh, sorry, reducing only those as they pass the threshold. I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Their old familiar carols play. Also, uh, if you noticed, I will. Flip it. I flipped it to be right after the pr the compressor and before the EQ, and that changed the sound pretty drastically. Uh, I like to have my compressors before EQs. Some people like it the opposite direction. It's kind of a matter of you know whatever you prefer. Uh, but that just makes more sense to me. So yeah, because compressors will change you know frequency prevalence, and then you can do the EQ thing. Whereas you know if you were to EQ it, the compressor would actually reduce what your EQ is doing. So. That's why I like to do that, but sometimes I will flip it because people say it's warmer to have the EQ before the compressor and brighter to have it after. So depending on what I'm going for, that's what I'll do. So uh, same thing here with Kyle. Drop the compressor in, and now I can just use the Sibilance plugin. And the nice thing is there's a wonderful thing called Bright Pop, which is great. Uh, compression. <laughs> that's okay. That that. And that's too fast, Kyle. And in despair, I bowed my head. Yes, yeah, so you can see that really took out those S's. There is no peace on earth, I said. Great, some EQ. So this might be counterintuitive, but I actually want it to be brighter, even though he's singing in a lower register. So. And in despair, I bowed my head. Uh -huh, I'm gonna cut the low end. There is no peace on earth, I said. Uh -huh. Yep. For hate is strong and mocks the song. And I'm actually gonna try to cut out some of his breathing. Um, so I'm just gonna use a gate, and I'm gonna stick that right after the waves thing. This bear I bowed my head. Okay. There is no peace on earth, I said. And then make the release pretty slow. For hate is strong and mocks the song. Great. Of peace on earth. Real natural. All right. My vocal. Then rang the... All right, so. Then rang the bells more loud and deep. Oh, that's not the melody. I was like, I'm singing it wrong. Okay. So I've already got my siblings thing because I technically started this before. And then I've got this VEQ, which uh, it's got a high pass filter at 82, low pass filter off. It's got a little bump, uh, two decibels at 330, and then another bump, three decibels at 1.5 kilohertz, and then a significant bump of seven decibels at 10 kilohertz. Uh, so this is just a nice analog plug-in analog modeler it's a lead vocal preset i like where it sets my voice um and i use it one more time on the harmony vocals they have a backing vocals preset so again just makes it a little bit easier and i like analog modeled software um because it makes me feel cool and trendy so here is everything now we get to actually kind of not that what we haven't been doing isn't mixing but now we get to focus on all right so the balance of things the space of things all that uh, oh yeah, one more thing before we get started. Um, just as a baseline, I like to set a ballad reverb because I know I like it on my A channel return track. And I'm just gonna pump that in to the vocals and a lot for the harmony vocals. 
which I might actually, you know what, just for funsies, yep, there's my thing. I'm gonna put another reverb here. I'm gonna use this church reverb and uh, just set it, set their harmony vocals back. So let's see what that sounds like by, you know, going to where they actually sing first. Here we go. Okay, DSer, right. Note taken, KJ. Waves compared. Wait, here we go. You know, when you are doing this, it just is like you feel like, hey, look, there's a female vocals. Wait, I put that on Kyle. Kyle's not a female vocal. Uh, let's do bright pop. Honestly, I could do nothing to this and it would be fine, but this is my flow. Okay. Yeah, that's way more controlled. Great. Uh, turn that reverb off. So here's what it sounds like in the church. Great, so. Okay, we get it, peace on earth. All right, so the reason I use a return track for uh, lead vocal reverbs instead of a inline channel reverb is because I don't wanna lose the presence of uh, my initial sound so then i just send it over to a return track and then i can mix that in as i want to um whereas i'm okay you know setting it further back in space um by putting the reverb directly in line with the channel for other instruments so now the moment has come Christmas Day. Great. And there's that reverb, but she is still too present. So I'm just actually going to set her back a little bit in the mix. Um, so this one, I will use a reverb. Uh, not the ballad reverb, but I just needed a reverb plugin. And I keep thinking that this is going to be the fastest way. It's not. What a fool I am. Okay, so let's use room ambience and set it to like 40. How's that? I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Yep, like that. Their old familiar carols play. And mild and sweet their songs repeat. Okay, so that's actually too much reverb, but I don't know if that's too much reverb for this moment or in general, so I guess I'm gonna keep going. Also, one thing that we haven't talked about yet, but that I have been doing as we've been going is I've been actually adding in more headroom to my master channels because when it comes time to automate because of all the compression and things, uh, the makeup gain and all that really sets it really close to uh, digital zero. So I do technically have six decibels of headroom, but I'd like to have more. Um, and I will get to that in a later video probably. But uh, so I've just been setting my master channels, uh, sorry, my channel group channel faders at minus six if I need to, um, just so I have some more headroom to play with. So, uh, yeah. In my heart I hear that peace on earth, goodwill to men. And in despair I bowed my head. 
Okay, so actually, <laughs> um, I wish the base did different things. So I am just gonna make it do different things. By the power of magic, uh, I'm gonna take that. And I'm gonna take that and flip flop them. And then just make this note. Make sense. So let's hear it. Come on. Ah, uh, it does. It goes to the wrong note. All right. Well, never mind. Let's get over it. I mean, I could have you re-record, but you know. Actually, you know what I can do? I can do that. And that. Oh, yeah. And then just uh, crossfade that a little bit. Great. So now when the bass comes in, it just kind of rolls in nicely here. Bring it That's nice. Yes. There is no peace on earth. All right. So that moment right there is a point where you would want to just uh, automate and not not uh, change your compressor settings. There is no peace on earth. I said. said uh, so. Thank goodness for headroom. Earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the song. Okay, uh, I think same thing. I want some ambience on Kyle's vocal here. Earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the song. On earth, good will men, but the bells are ringing like a choir singing. Does anybody hear them? Okay, and then I come in. Then rang the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor does he sleep. I love that reverb. I think that makes the backup vocals sound like angels. So, especially Stephanie when that moment comes in. Uh, so, ambience on me. Let's try that. Then rang the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor does he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail. With peace on earth, good will to man. The ringing, singing on its way. Oh yeah, okay, so here's a moment. Um, I'm actually gonna take the piano significantly out here, uh, which I might actually just drop it so it builds back in, but I like that moment of. Earth, good will to man. The ringing, singing on its way. Maybe like. The world Okay, let's try that. Earth, good will to man. The ringing sing 
and I'm actually going to add, so let's duplicate this. Uh, I'm going to add a little uh, hit. Whoa. All right. Here. I think this guy, right? Okay, which I know sounds huge. Which actually. I might actually go and let me see if I have anything else in my sound library. Sound design, sound effects, wait, music production. Hyper bits. Effects. Impacts. I do like that. It's not bad. I like that, it's got a nice bell sound to it, so let's use that instead, so. Nope, you know what? I think I was right the first time. What about this? This sounds orchestral. Yeah. And I'm actually gonna roll that off and do the EQ thing on this. Why you rename this effects? Come on, effects EQ. So I'm gonna take out all the low end. Yeah, nice, but. So now it just kind of sounds like a cymbal roll, but I like that. Um, Maybe a riser here. So. Two digital. Nice, all right, and that'll make that moment really pop. So do this, duplicate, delete, delete, okay. Make sure that drops right where I want it to. I think that's right. Whoa, okay, take it easy, riser. Need to be more like that. Okay, and then bring that impact back, but this time it won't crossfade it out. Uh, also, that should happen later. Peace on. Thank you, piano. Oh, also, I think I need this to be, well, I need this to be quieter. I know that for sure. Nice. And I need that ballad reverb to turn off for that moment. Um... Actually, you can turn back on here. What? Why is there still reverb? What is happening? Oh, I'm just an idiot. Yeah. 
I'm a straight up idiot. What is happening? Yeah, and then maybe turn on after that. Like that. Nope. Still a dummy. Oh, uh, you know what? Actually, it should probably... I mean, that's, that's all fine. But uh, if I want it to be what I want it to be, I need to use the dry-wet effect. Here. Here. Turn off. Yep, and then that can actually happen much sooner. Wrong note again, KJ. All right, so that is uh, really most of what I wanted to do. Um, Yeah, see, that sounds unnatural, so I just gotta change that speed to be more right. Okay, great. So that's most of the song. Um, so I'm going to save this project because I don't want to lose it. Uh, and then in the next video, we'll do some panning and maybe some mastering stuff. And that should be mostly it. So here we go on the next video.